The mature transcript for many genes is encoded in a discontinuous manner as a series of discrete exons. Exons are separated from each other along the DNA strand by non-coding introns. mRNAs, RNAs and tRNAs can all contain these encoded introns, which must be removed from precursor RNAs to produce functional RNAs. Most introns do not themselves contain genes and are simply removed from the precursor RNAs and degraded. There are a number of different classes of intron. Some are excised from the primary transcript by proteins, some by ribonucleoproteins, and some excise themselves. Yet all use a series of transesterification reactions to accomplish the task. In all splicing reactions, the two exons that surround an intron are not directly joined to one another in a single step. Instead, a two-step reaction occurs in which the intron is first detached from exon 1 freeing this exon to react with exon 2. Both of these reaction steps are transesterifications in which a single phosphodiester bond between two nucleotides is broken and replaced with an energetically equivalent phosphodiester bond without net input of energy. We will now focus on the splicing of eukaryotic mRNAs. Introns can account for as much as 90% of the length of a typical precursor mRNA. Splicing of eukaryotic mRNA is catalyzed by the spliceosome, a large ribonucleoprotein machine. The spliceosome is composed of five individual small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, pronounced SNRPs, which comprise both RNA and protein components. These SNRPs are U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. Each one contains an RNA molecule called an snRNA that is usually 100 to 300 nucleotides long, together with several protein factors. The snRNAs perform many of the spliceosome's mRNA recognition events by forming Watson-Crick base pairs with the precursor mRNA and with one another. The protein factors recognize specific sequences in the mRNA or help to promote conformational rearrangements in the spliceosome that are required for the splicing reaction to progress. Before splicing can occur, the spliceosome must identify the splice sites, the sites at which exons are separated from the neighbouring introns and at which two exons will be subsequently attached. The spliceosome identifies splice sites in part by recognising extremely short sequence motifs found in each pre-mRNA. These motifs are a GU sequence at the 5' prime end of the intron and an AG sequence at the 3' prime end of the intron. In addition to these sequences, a branch point nucleotide within the intron and a polypyrimidine tract upstream of the 3' prime splice site are key elements that are recognised by the splicing machinery. We also understand that there are general features of exonic and intronic sequences which result in the tendency of certain proteins, like the SR proteins, to bind to exons and other proteins, like the HNRNP proteins, to bind introns. These differences also help to define exons and introns. The first step in the splicing reaction is the recognition of the 5' prime splice site by the U1 SNRP. Other splice site consensus sequences are recognised by non-SNRP factors. The branch point sequence is recognised by the branch point binding protein, BBP, and the polypyrimidine tract and 3' prime splice site are bound by two specific protein components of a splicing complex referred to as U2 auxiliary factors, or U2AFs. U2AF65 binds to the polypyrimidine tract and U2AF35 binds to the 3' prime splice site. Following the binding of these initial components, the remainder of the splicing apparatus assembles around them, in some cases displacing some of the previously bound components. Next, the precursor mRNA undergoes a structural rearrangement and the first transesterification step takes place. During this step, the 2'OH of an adenosine residue located within the intron attacks the exon 1 intron boundary, detaching the intron from the exon and producing a branched intron structure called a lariat. Other rearrangements in the spliceosome then bring together the newly freed exon 1 and the intron exon 2 junction. The terminal 3'OH of the newly released exon attacks the intron exon 2 junction. 
This second transesterification reaction completes exon ligation or splicing, releasing the lariat intron. While the molecular details of the individual steps are not fully understood, it's clear that the spliceosome is a dynamic ribonuclear protein machine and that conformational changes in the RNA components themselves are central to the spliceosome's function.